thanks to Obama handing the keys to a dictator's playbook to our current president and best CIA asset. He's the best. No one's better. No one's a better puppet of the CIA. Donald Trump. Uh, I have to do legally. I'm supposed to do the fingers and the hands when I mention his name. Um, but uh, <laughs> now Donald Trump is persecuting even more whistleblowers under his regime. One of these whistleblowers is a, uh, someone by the name of Daniel Everett Hale. A former U.S. intelligence analyst was arrested Thursday and charged with violating the Espionage Act for allegedly leaking documents about the secretive U.S. drone program. 31-year-old Daniel Hale was arrested in Nashville, Tennessee. He faces up to 50 years in prison. Hale was enlisted in the Air Force from 2009 to 2013, during which he worked with the National Security Agency and the Joint Special Operations Task Force at the Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, where he helped identify targets to be assassinated. He later worked as a contractor for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Hale's accused of disclosing 11 top secret or secret documents to a reporter. The indictment does not name the reporter, but unnamed government sources have told media outlets the reporter is investigative journalist Jeremy Scahill of The Intercept. Now, in 2015, The Intercept did put out a series of stories called The Drone Papers, which outlined how the Obama administration was using inaccurate technology and kill lists to take out people they considered, quote unquote, dangerous. Um, what we've published uh, is an extensive uh, look into how this program has operated historically, but specifically under President Obama. One of the most significant uh, uh, findings of this, and my colleague Cora Courier really dug deep into this, um, is we published for the first time the kill chain what the bureaucracy of assassination looks like. And what you see is that um, all of these officials, including people like the Treasury Secretary, are part of uh, signing off on all of this, uh, at where they have these secret meetings uh, and they discuss who's going to live and die around the world. And at the end of that process, it is the President of the United States who signs what, what amounts to a uh, death warrant. Uh, for whoever they've decided should die based on what amounts to a parallel secret uh, judicial system in the United States that is not really subjected to any kind of judicial review, where the president acts sort of as emperor, issues an edict that you die. And what we show, and, and this is the first time that, that there's documentary evidence of this, is that the president gives the military a 60-day window to hunt down and kill these individuals. Uh, Ken Roth from Human Rights Watch uh, pointed out today, if the standard is that the people who are uh, being targeted uh, for assassination uh, is that they represent an imminent threat, which is what the president says the U.S. policy is, uh, then why do they have 60 days to do it? Why don't they need to do it now if it's imminent? Well, that's because they've redefined the term imminent uh, to, to, to be so vague as to not even resemble its actual commonly understood definition. So here's the thing. When I was in high school, <clears throat> a girl that had a crush on me put me on a kill list when I didn't reciprocate those feelings. I was number four, which, let's be honest, hurt. That hurt. Number four? <laughs> number four. I, I, I wasn't even in the top three? Come on. What the fuck? Right? It must have not been that great of a crush. But look, the school administrators found out about it and they suspended her from school and ensured that she got psychiatric care. When a 15-year-old has a kill list, she's removed from society. When a president has one, he gets the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I, don't, I think that's not just an insult to what the prize represents, but all of the words in Nobel Peace <laughs> Prize. <laughs> Hale was arrested and indicted for revealing information to a journalist and currently faces 50 years in prison. You know who's facing zero years in prison? All of the people that had a fucking kill list and used million dollar drones to rain death from the skies. By the way, uh, Death from the Skies is also the title of the newest Steven Seagal film that's going right to VHS. VHS. <laughs>
Very, very excited. <laughs> he is still alive, uh, you guys. <laughs> Just wanted to let everybody know. <laughs> but look, the, the Espionage Act protects real sociopaths and murderers, but ensures the people who had a conscience about, the, about their misdeeds face a lifetime in prison. Now, the primary reason these whistleblowers are villainized is because uh, they're calling out American war crimes, and that is deemed treasonous. So let's find out what the definition of treason actually is. Treason against the United States shall consist only in levying war against them or in adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. So you have to be waging war against the nation in order to be convicted of treason. Waging war. If that's the definition of treason, then the entire Confederacy should be considered treasonous. But instead of that, we put up statues of them and fucking named streets after them. There were U.S. bankers helping the Nazis funnel money, like Prescott Bush, and we let his kids and grandkids become presidents that lead us into more wars. Right. Major U.S. corporations like the, the Rockefellers, GM, and Ford all aided the Nazis, and we hailed them as the pride of American innovation. Look, my first car was a 1996 Ford Taurus, and it was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that car fucking sucked. It, every, every, every week it was something new with that car. And now that I know that Ford was helping the Nazis, all of that makes sense. Build Ford tough. <laughs> Build Ford tough, just, which is basically one small way for a Nazi sympathizer to win against minorities. That's all that is. <laughs> 